So what we also need to talk about is then how do you break up these monopolies, which we can call deregulation and uh, predatory pricing. How monopolies stop others from entering their industry. Deregulation, as defined here, is our breakup of our monopoly. And as a breakup of the monopoly, you do it to enhance consumer choice. You do it to improve quality of the product. You do it to reduce prices. All very good reasons to break up monopolies. And we then see examples of this. The most famous example would be AT&T. Um, uh, up until 1979, 1980, AT&T was the only phone company in the United States. Um, and then it broke up. Um, it, the company was forced to break up into lots of phone companies, which is what we see around us today. And since that time, since the 1980s, we now have more choices. Phone calls are of higher quality, and phone calls are definitely a lot cheaper. Um, we also saw that there was basically sort of a monopoly in internet browsers. Um, it used to be that Microsoft Explorer was the almost the de facto monopoly um, for computers. Um, but we certainly don't see that today, and we see many browsers exist out there, um, and some are much better, and obviously no one really pays for browsers, I don't suspect. Um, but, how do I word this here? Um, obviously, monopolies don't want this. Uh, monopolies don't want to be broken up because they, um, they obviously make a lot of money. They're, they got a good deal going on here. Um, so what tends to happen Because of what's called regulatory capture, most monopolies remain. So regulatory capture, as defined here, would be that companies uh, basically, you know, they bribe, they grease the wheels, they um, make sure that the government is not opposed to them, and they do everything they can to um, ensure that their monopoly is not broken up. Um, so instead then of the government acting in favor of consumers getting better things, the regulatory capture means that the monopoly has paid enough money to make sure that they are not hurt by what's happening. They not only do this with monopolies, but they also do this in other ways that they are regulated. Let's say that they are regulated against polluting or other certain things. Um, this regulatory capture does absolutely certainly exist. But there's another way then that monopolies can also avoid being broken up, and that would be with predatory pricing. Predatory pricing happens much more often. Um, it basically means lowering the price to scare away competitors or bankrupt them. Um, we see this with the best example we have is with Hawaiian Airlines. Um, 
there was a time when um, there were three airlines offering inter-island flights. There was Hawaiian Air, um, there was Aloha, and there was uh, Go, I think was the third one. Um, and these three companies made prices incredibly cheap between the islands. But the problem was that the market became so saturated with airline seats, right, and there's only so many people going between the islands, is that the prices were so low that basically Aloha Airlines went out of business. And then shortly after that, so did uh, Go Airlines as well, leaving Hawaiian Airlines to be the only major airline between most of the islands. And right now we have Island Air, but um, as I'm recording this lecture, uh, Island Air is uh, bankrupt as well right now. So, um, and there's talk of letting Southwest Airlines, that Southwest Airlines might want to offer flights between the islands, but we would have to suspect that Hawaiian Airlines, which has then this kind of, in essence, this monopoly flying between the islands, um, that they're not going to just let this happen without trying to compete on the basis of price, and that they will do that until uh, an airline gets out of the business or until they go bankrupt. So it's kind of like... Um, you know, having a duel, I guess, and just, you know, one party's going to win and the other party's going to lose out. Um, I shouldn't forget Mokalele Airlines, too, but uh, they're not doing too much here at that point.